doing everybody? Uh, Lib Thims here. Uh, today we're going to re be reviewing the 2018 film The Laws of Thermodynamics by Mateo Gill. It's a Spanish film and we'll watch it which is available on Netflix with English subtitles. The uh, film is 100 minutes and ideally with commentary the goal is to finish the review of the film by 130 minutes. So we'll set the stopwatch. So, the gist of the film is that there is this guy, Vito Sands, who's an astrophysicist. Some people have said this is a Spanish version of the Big Bang Theory. And he has a first girlfriend who he, he dumps and something like that and starts dating this model. This is his friend who is a uh, advertising executive. And he is again is a graduate student and a, uh, studying astrophysics. And he's also a s assistant teach professor assistant professor's assistant in a thermodynamics class. <clears throat> and this is either his first girlfriend or his one of his girlfriends who is a just got a job as a lawyer with her own office but he's a player and he has a, lots of girlfriends so we're going to compare this film with my uh, drafting manuscript human chemical thermodynamics to see uh, to point out where the errors are in his film and also a few good points. Uh, just to clarify, Matteo Gill's film is a physicist view of thermodynamics, which is different from a physical chemist view of thermodynamics. So this is a more correct view of uh, thermodynamics applied to humans, and this is kind of like a uh, secondary, tertiary approximation. So, correctly, you want to think of humans as uh, in terms of this kind of theme, where or Alberti's thermodynamics of biochemical reactions. So, humans are powered chemicals that react on the surface of the earth. So, while not entirely correct, we want to give uh, Matteo Gill a thumbs up, two thumbs up for making the film. So we're going to just watch it and see what we can learn. There's about a, t a dozen interesting points. You might see me flip these up in front of the screen uh, just to cover up the sexual parts and the, f the f one or two things, uh, uh, um, scenes that come up so we can keep it internet uh, friendly. Here's the film over here, there's the model, there's the astrophysicist graduate student. Now, Matteo Gill is the co-writer of the film Agora, which is the story of the uh, of Hypatia, the, the only known female universal genius who was uh, stoned at the time of the downfall and the burning of the uh, Library of Alexandria. And her father was one of the last librarians of the head of the librarian, uh, the head, of, head librarian of the Library of Alexandria. He also directed or co-wrote Vanilla Sky with, with Tom Cruise, which is more popular than this film, but this is still a very intelligent film. And to give a, uh, before we get into the film, just to give a quick overview of history of the uh, types of chemistry and physics based models or applications to relationships that have made it to the film level. Uh, the oldest of which is Goethe's Electrophinities. And this has been a 
made in the film at least twice, including the one TV show. So here we have And also to introduce our uh, co-host here, we have the Rodents Thinker, and then we have the Monkey Thinker. They'll be joining us as we watch the, review the film. We also have our Nietzsche's Will to Power Bar, A Taste Beyond Good and Evil. And we'll be using this to keep ourselves charged while we go through the review process. Nietzsche was one of the first persons to attempt to reevaluate all values based on thermodynamics. He didn't actually make it to a finished product, but he ended up with about a thousand, thousand and forty-seven uh, fragments. Where the last of which was, which he said was, "The world to me is a monster of energy." So we're, this is a very difficult subject, and if you want to embrace everything and produce a finalized version of the whole situation. So, just Goethe here. Explain here we have the characters A Charlotte, B Edward, C the Captain, and they decide uh, they're rich uh, people living in a large estate and their kind of marriage is getting bored and I'm, so they Edward says he's going to invite his old friend the captain to come and onto the estate to help with gardening because he's without a job and then Charlotte says okay if you do that that's, that sounds good I'm also going to invite my adopted niece of my deceased best friend, Adelie, who's D, who's not shown here, she's going to come to the state, and then we watch the reactions that come or unfold. Now, in Matteo Gill's film, he doesn't involve, there's no chemistry involved here, he's just, he uses a lot of, uh, basically takes a number of different principles. For example, here we see the Newton's universal law of gravitation, which is, comes from social gravity, theory. So there's no chemistry involved in his movie, but nevertheless we're going to watch it anyways. But Goethe is way ahead of every, the curve here. So for example, <clears throat> all of this comes from Newton's Query 31, but to summarize, if for example we have A B bonded together, and over like we have a water we have oxygen and hydrogen bonded together in the form of H2O. And then C, we invite uh, sodium into the reaction. And sodium, as we see down here on the periodic table, is column 1, row 3 of the periodic table. Now, these are all organized in terms of um, valence, or outer orbital electron structures. So sodium has the same outer valence shell as hydrogen, but it's more powerful. So if we have a bond of hydrogen bonded with oxygen, let's say in the form of AB, water, and we invite sodium, to come onto the estate. Oxygen will have no choice in this reaction but to detach from hydrogen and bond with sodium, Na, because of the difference in the outer orbital electron structure. 
So all these are what Weiss calls proton electron configurations. So humans are just larger proton electron configurations. So the question is, it involves around choice and free will and uh, Matteo Guild does a pretty good job in the movie. He says free will is just an illusion. We'll get to that in a second. But just to show an example on video of when sodium is dropped in water to explain to see this visually. So Live Mobile just sent me this solar wireless battery pack. I'm excited, let's see what's inside. I really like the build. It's got hand grips on. Very soft. So you should be able to just cut it with a key. Something that soft, you wouldn't think would be dangerous. But, check this out. So there we see sodium in the form of a soft metal being thrown in the water and the hydrogen gas being exploded oh, out of the water. Man. So, Berta correctly said, well, if water comes into this situation where sodium is introduced, there's no choice involved in the whole thing. The reaction is already predetermined. So next, we have the uh, some films that were made out of this book are the, the Elective Affinities, it's an uh, Italian film, pretty decent. And there's also the uh, one that was made in Cuba called Affinidades came out in 2011 and there's also we can watch young Goethe in love where they're kissing under the in the rain at the abandoned church or building or something this is when he was a lawyer before he became famous for his elective affinities and the only English version We'll check on here in a second. Here is uh, Greta Garbo stars in Ninochka. It's called, this is kind of like Russian materialism uh, version of what love is. We'll look at a film clip of that. Now, the only person who's ever tried to make this uh, elective affinities with this whole premise of the reactions being predetermined is Francis Ford Coppola. So, he is over here so here we have this the this is the film you can watch there's this summary of it here on HMOPD and also YouTube so here is Vito Sands he's astrophysics graduate student he's the main star there's Cupid the Roman god of love the statue and there's Berta as Kaz, she's a model in the film who wants to become an actress. And the film is made by Matteo Gill, shown here. Now, just to go through a few things. Okay. 
Here he uses uh, Newton's law of gravitation to explain uh, attractions between people. So here the reason the reason when we we'll see we have an overweight person is that he has a larger mass compared to uh, this guy who's the uh, advertising agent in the film. So they both see uh, the model and they they start moving towards her. And because he has a heavier mass, Mateo thinks that uh, he will move, there'll be more force of attraction. According to the Newton's law of gravitation. So he's using the wrong formula here, but at least we'll give him credit for trying. So he says mass one is uh, the overweight guy, mass. 2 is the model, or R is the radius of separation, and G is the gravitational constant. So he says there's going to be more force pulling the overweight guy towards the model than the advertising executive. So the force in modern terms, or in modern chemical thermodynamic terms, is the Gibbs energy, which is called the force function. It's not ex Gibbs energy and force are different, but when you multiply the force function, uh, I can't explain that right now, but force, when force moves an object per unit distance, you get an energy, and that's called Gibbs energy. And that's what they're, the formula gets a little more complicated. So then he also down here says, we'll see a little bit of this in the film. He's, so this, he's, he spends a lot of time thinking about humans is the, the supermodel is the sun and the other people just rotate about her. There's a little, this is called social gravitation theory and it was, that's where gravitation theory comes from. But social gravitation theory is down here. This is where cities and towns are defined as P1 is population of one city and population 2 is another city. This is distance between cities. So there's New York as the star around which the other cities rotate. And this was, there's four formulators of this. Francesco Algarotti, Henry Carey is a big American sociologist, real big smart guy. John Q. Stewart and then Willie Morin is the guy who made this whole thing. So then there we have our, uh, what they do in the film. It's not exactly correct, but at least it's m moving in the right direction. Now, to get back to who was the first person to try to make a film out of this, Goethe's book, Lect Affinities, it was Francis Ford Coppola. And we're just going to read his paragraph here so we can <clears throat> all get on the same page in terms of exactly what this film would have been if someone like Coppola did it, and say if I was consulted the whole thing to make sure it was correct. So Coppola here says that So he says, after doing Apocalypse Now, great film, he says, I imagined that I was going to do this great work, which is going to be a series of four films loosely inspired by Goethe's Elect Affinities. Those of you who know Elect Affinities, as we've just discussed, it's one of the first modern novels. It's a very simple story about a man and his wife. Again, uh, man and his wife. Uh, a, Charlotte B is Edward. They're living in an absolutely wonderful place. Rich mansion, they have lots of money. But the man suggests, well, my friend the captain, he's an architect, and I thought it would be nice for if he would come and live with us for a while. And he could plan the gardens and stuff. 
And the wife says, well, you know, I really were so perfect and happy here that I was, that I was going to say my niece is her, her mother has passed and I was going to invite the niece to come live with us, stay with us. And they said, well, let's have the uh, captain and the niece come. Now we have four different chemical species introduced into the system, which is a more complex than we had just three species with the water, sodium, and oxygen reaction. And so you have the basic setting of the man, the woman, the other man, and the other woman. In Goethe's mind, he was working on a chemical formula A, B, A primed, B primed. This is not exactly correct, but this is how Coppola understood things. And I had a concept to make an ambitious film on that theme. So in 2004 he was talking about making it in Japan. And then... At another time, he said it was going to be a nine, a ten-hour film, or eight hours long, filmed over ten years. So maybe if we would have seen this, it would have been a beautiful film. But he tried to get his, he ended up loosely trying to get the thing made, and and he ended up. Uh, lo the film Lost in Translations is his like last ditch attempt at making the thing work, but it wasn't that good. It didn't even have anything to do with the book, as far as I can tell. So now, Here we have, this is Ninochka with Greta Garbo, this is a famous quote here. The top here, first it comes from Russia in 1939, Ninochka. And then there was MGM tried to make a musical out of it. And then it ended up going to the film Silk Stockings. So we'll look at a little clip here to see what, what the Russian materials, the materialism looks like. So over here we have the famous quote, Love is a romantic designation for a most ordinary biological or shall we say chemical process, a lot of nonsense is talked and written about it. So here's the clip here.